Ms. Fallon returning? Okay. Jackson coming back. Mr. Lawler's Mr. Miss Jackson coming back. Oh, there she is. Okay. All right. Just before we proceed with um, uh, the next witness, who I understand is going to be Mr. Carter, is that right? Yes. Mr. Carter, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Please state your name. You may be seated, sir. Mr. Carter, uh, Mr. Lawler has indicated at this point that you are going to be the um, defense's next witness, and so I'm going to ask you some questions about that. Everyone else may be seated as well. Um, Mr. Carter, do you understand that as the person who is accused of a crime that you have a right to remain silent during this trial? What that means is that nobody can force you to take the witness stand and answer questions. Do you understand that you have a right to remain silent? Do you understand that as the person who's accused of a crime, you do have a right to testify if you would like to do that? Uh, do you understand that the decision to remain silent or to testify is your decision and it is not a decision that can be made for you by your lawyers or by anybody else? Do you understand that if you do testify, you'll be subject to cross-examination by the state attorney just as your attorneys have cross-examined all of the state's witnesses? Do you understand that on cross-examination you cannot refuse to answer any question? Yes, okay. uh, have you had an opportunity to speak with your attorneys about your right to testify and your right to remain silent? Yes. Have they answered all of your questions about those rights? Yes. Um, have you understood everything that they've explained to you? Yes, okay. um, is it your decision to testify during this trial? Yes. Are you making that decision freely and voluntarily? Has anybody forced, coerced, or threatened you in order to get you to make that decision? Okay. Um, it is my understanding uh, that Mr. Carter has no prior criminal history. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So there's no issue on impeachment by any prior felonies or crimes of dishonesty, right? Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's bring the jury in. Welcome back, everyone. You may be seated. Defense, you may call your next witness. Yes, yes Your Honor. At this time, the uh, defendant calls Noel Oliver Carter. Oliver Carter. You may inquire, counsel. May it please the court. Yes, Good morning. Good morning, Pat. Are you nervous? Yes. Okay. First of all, um, tell the jury uh, where you're from. Um, I was born in Hollywood, Florida. Okay. And where do you presently live now? Davie, Florida. And uh, who's down in Hollywood, Florida? What relatives? Uh, I have my mom, my brother, my sister, um, and my two nieces, and my okay. brother-in-law and my sister-in-law. Okay. What do your uh, mother and father do? Well, my, my father's uh, you can go ahead sir my father's deceased he was uh, a civil engineer for the city of Miami and my mother's a uh, registered nurse okay what area does she work in any general area um, my mom is a strong-willed individual she's an entrepreneur but she works as a registered nurse regularly um, but she does start businesses frequently okay. um, tell us a little bit about your uh, your background where did you go to high school 
uh, Western High School. And where exactly is that located? Davie, Florida. Okay, for, for some people, where, where is, is Davie near Fort Lauderdale? Um, Davie's uh, one of the largest cities in, in Broward County. It kind of stretches from the east to the west. Um, I grew up in Weston. Um, when I grew up there, we didn't have a high school, so I ended up attending Western High School, which is very close and relative to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, after high school, did you graduate? Yes, sir. And you go to college? Yes, sir. And where'd you go? Florida International University. And did you get a degree? Yes, sir. And what was your degree in? In finance. And uh, after getting that degree, did you start working someplace full-time? Uh, yes, I began working full-time at Best Buy. Doing what? I was a Magnolia Home Theater Pro. Okay, and for how long did you do that? Uh, I was at Best Buy for about four years. Okay, and at some point did you get in the finance business? Yeah, I was fortunate to land a position um, with a bank, financial institution. Okay, and when you first started, what was your occupation or title? I was hired as a personal banker. Okay, and uh, was that in the same area, the Davie uh, Weston area? Yes, it was actually downtown Davie. Okay, uh, as time progressed, uh, tell us about your you know upward mobility in the, for that financial to institution. What kind of raises or promotions did you get? Well, I worked as a personal banker for a year and a half. Um, I was promoted to branch manager. I worked as a branch manager for six months, and I had an opportunity to transition into the business banking role. I assumed the role as a business banker and retained that role for about two and a half years when I received another promotion to get my licenses. I secured my life insurance, my Series 6 and my Series 63, which made me a brokerage associate. After that, I worked as a licensed relationship manager for some time, I would say about a year and a couple months, and I received another promotion actually this year in February, which gave me the opportunity to test for my Series 7, which fortunately I passed in August, and I've been working as uh, my new title is Vice President, Regional Banker, Private Banker, essentially uh, Relationship Wealth Management. Okay. And as of uh, today, are you still uh, with that financial institution? Yes, sir. What I want to do, uh, Noel, is take uh, the jury through how you ended up in Orlando on June 4th, 2015, okay? But what I want to do is go back and uh, talk to them about your relationship and how it developed with Joanne. How long ago did you meet her and under what circumstances? I met Joanne in February of 2013. She came in with her cousin to establish a nonprofit business account. Okay, and so you met her through your bank? Yes, sir. And after meeting her, tell us how your uh, relationship went from business to personal. Um, well, as a relationship manager, you frequently check in with your clients, um, and I established uh, a strong rapport um, with Joanne. Uh, we exchanged personal cell phone numbers, I would say about a couple months after she opened the account, and we began to see each other shortly thereafter. Okay. And now, is there an age difference between the two of you? Yes. About how much? Uh, about seven and a half years. Okay. At some point, did you start dating her? Yes, sir. Okay. And was that down in South Florida? Yes, sir. Okay. And at some point in your relationship, did she come up to uh, Orlando? Uh, yeah. In August 2014, she was accepted to UCF's um, health care management program, and she decided to uh, leave FAU, where she was currently attending, and to attend UCF. Uh, she, it was a stronger program, to my understanding, uh, a more accredited or a more recognized program. Did you still continue relationship with her when she moved up here to Orlando? Yes, sir. Uh, for the jury's benefit, when she moved in Orlando up until, like, say, June 4th, when this incident, but how many times did you come up and see her or visit her, and did she reciprocate and come down to South Florida? Very frequently. I, w I would estimate I came up um, maybe 30 times over those 10 months. Um, how many is that? About 30 okay. or more. Um, I would come up every time I had an opportunity. Okay, and, and would you st how long would you stay for when you come up? Um, if it was a longer weekend, three days. Um, if I had a day off during the week, uh, which is termed a comp day, I would usually leave right after work and uh, stay for that day and then leave later in the afternoon. Now, when she first moved up here, where was she living? Uh, Night Circle. Where is that? It's right across the street from the UCF campus. And on the night of this incident, was she still living in the same location? Yes, sir. All right. Um, on times when you came up here, did you have an occasion to drive her back to Miami? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, tell us about that a little bit. Well, I had um, gone on Groupon and purchased um, some tickets for shows and things of that nature. We had made plans to come back down after I drove up, um, so that was the plan that weekend. Okay, but prior to that, had you driven her down to Miami on occasions when you came up to visit and that 30 times that you came up? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. 
And are there times that she came down to see you through bus or other transportation? Yes, she would take the mega bus. It had Wi-Fi, would allow her to study for the, the duration. Um, she would come down, I would pick her up at the Sheridan bus station, and a lot of the times Monday morning I would drop her back off at the bus station before I went to work. Um, during that relationship, were there some times here and there where you guys broke up and then got back together? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's talk about leading to this event. Um, there's been some evidence that you guys have been broken up. Can you explain to the jury how it is you developed a, a reconnection in the, uh, for you coming up here? Sure. Explain uh, to them. Sure. Um, we had separated, and at the time we had separated, um, we started to text each other about a week after we separated. We started to essentially make plans just to see each other. I went to her house, actually ate dinner with her family, um, and then she returned to school within that 30-day period. We still continued communication. We spoke often, pretty much every day, um, and that was the extent. I mean, that was normal any time we broke up. It's usually about a couple of days before we'd reestablish a connection. And now in the times before you came up here, is there a time where she, because of an argument you had, she actually blocked your number? Yeah, we would do that to each other. Um, we get upset with each other. I, I blocked her number. She'd show up at my door and ask me why. <laughs> and uh, she would block my number, and I'd call her uh, from my office phone and say, hey, it's me. And usually um, everything would be fine after that, after we had a conversation. Okay, so take us through that week, like the couple of days before you came up here on June 4th. Tell me how it all went about for you to get up here and what day you came up. Well, originally I, I planned on coming up on Friday. Um, she still had a study session that she needed to complete. So coming up on Friday would allow us to spend that night together. And then Saturday morning, we planned on returning back to South Florida. Okay, and how is it you ended up on Thursday, coming up here Thursday? Uh, earlier in the week, she told me about a concert that she wanted to attend. The concert was going to be in Orlando on Thursday, but it was also going to be in Miami on Saturday, I believe. Um, she wasn't a particularly a fan of the venue in Miami. She would prefer to go to the venue here, which I, I wasn't sure if she had been there before. Um, but earlier in the week when she told me she was going to be attending the concert, she also thought it would be a good idea if I came up a day early so we could spend a little more time together. And what did you have to do with work to get to leave early? Well, Thursday, my afternoon was clear of appointments. I did have a couple in the morning. Um, so after I completed my last appointment at about 11 a.m., I contacted my boss and I requested to use a comp time for the afternoon so that I could head to Orlando um, and be with Joanne. Okay. And uh, you, you then drove up here to Orlando to yes, her apartment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Describe to the jury what you have to go through to get into her apartment. Um, well, at Night Circle, there's a guard gate there with a camera that faces your license plate. You have to give your driver's license to the guard gate, and he goes behind your car, writes down your license, I guess, to correlate with the video that's there. Um, and then after that, they let you in. Okay. And has that been the procedure, to your knowledge, out there since you've been going Every there? time. Now, when you got there, you parked your car, went up into the apartment? Yes, I parked my car in a guest spot, which I, it's a little distance from her apartment, parked, and then I walked down to her apartment. Okay. And you went in, and how were you greeted? Um, Joanne is very affectionate. Um, when she opened the door, she kind of jumped on me, and I caught her. Um, we started kissing, and then uh, I essentially carried her back to her room, and um, we, I closed the door behind me and carried her back to her room, essentially. Did you get to have uh, sexual relations at that time? We did, sir, yes. Um, after that occurred, tell us about how you were able to obtain a ticket to the show. Uh, she was on her computer. Um, and she basically told me that the ticket was going to be cheaper if we bought it ahead of time as opposed to the door, at the door. Um, so she asked me for my email address, and uh, she told me to check my email, which I did, and she had purchased uh, a ticket for me for the show. Your Honor, may I have a moment to get a copy? Yes. Let me know when you're done looking at it. Look up. 
I'm ready. Okay, you recognize that document? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, what is that document? It's a ticket to the show. And who purchased it? Uh, Joanne, she purchased it for me. And who is it sent to? It was sent to me. My email address is right here. Okay. Now, uh, after her ordering the ticket, uh, tell me about the involvement with Trevante. Um, oh, yes, I apologize. Tell us about how, you know, let me ask you, did you understand before you came up that Joanne was going to go to a concert with somebody else? She told me well, when she informed me that the show was going to be in Orlando on Thursday, um, that she had already made plans to go with a friend, um, which I didn't think was a problem. Did you understand it was a male friend? I did. She told me it was. Okay. Did you have any concerns really at that point that you expressed to her? No. So tell me about uh, you, when you first met Trevante. Um, when I first met Trevante, uh, Trevante, we exited her apartment and we went up to his car. She opened the passenger door, introduced me. I reached in, shook his hand, and introduced myself. Um, and I opened the back door. I sat in the back. She sat in the front. And what kind of name did he introduce himself as? Uh, he was introduced as Trey. Okay. And later you learned his name was Trevante? Yeah, within the last couple of days. Okay. And so um, after meeting him, tell me where you went next. Um, we went to the student kind of, I'd say it's a student community center. Um, they have a computer internet station um, that allows you to print. So we went there because the ticket wasn't going to be able to be scanned at the door. So we went there to print the ticket. So we had actually paper copies. You mean the ticket for you and them also? Yes. Okay. After that, where did you go? We went to the Walmart liquor store, which is just north of uh, Night Circle. Okay. And what did you do in there? I purchased uh, a small bottle of Hennessy. And um, I believe Joanne and Trevante uh, purchased a bottle of Ciroc. Okay, what is Ciroc? Ciroc is a flavored vodka. Did you go anywhere after that? Yes, we went to the 7-Eleven, which is in the same parking lot. Um, we all went inside, and I asked for a complimentary cup, um, which I put some ice into and bought a Sprite for myself. And I believe uh, Trevante and Joanne bought Sprite and orange juice. Okay. And um, at that point, did you start heading downtown? Yeah, we got back in the car, and we started to head towards downtown. Uh, had you ever been down on or Orange Avenue before? I've never been to downtown Orlando before that night. Okay, now you've been up here 30 more times, and you never went down to Orange uh, Avenue or downtown? We hung out mostly around the campus. Um, her brother lives close by, so a lot of times we'd go to their house and hang out with her niece and her nephew. Okay. Um, as you're going down to downtown, uh, did you guys start to prepare some drinks? Yes, uh, I prepared myself a drink, poured about half of my Sprite into the cup, and I uh, poured a little bit of Hennessy in there. Um, Joanne made herself a drink as well as making one for Trevante. Okay. Um, as you drove down, did you have any conversation? What were you all doing in the car? Uh, just talking about school. Um, I hadn't seen Joanne in about two weeks, so we we're, were just having small talk. Um, they had similar classes, so talking about that and, you know, just normal stuff, the concert. We were listening to music, so... Okay, and at that point, were there any issues, animosity with any of y'all? No, sir. Um, let's talk about the concert currency. Were you a fan of this uh, act? I am not a fan of currency. Okay, and uh, they were? Yeah, yes, sir. So at some point, you got downtown Orlando, correct? Yes, sir. And you parked where? Uh, we parked in a spot um, It's pretty much directly diagonal across from venue 578. Yes. I think the projector's on. Oh, you just need to turn on the projector. Nope. Hit that button again. Okay, and then turn on the projector. Yeah. The light's not on, I don't think. Okay, while that's warming up, let's talk a little bit. I was just having a so after you parked there, uh, about what time of day was it? Do you remember? Um, I think it was about 5.30, 5.45. Okay. And at, at that point, uh, did you have any more drinks in the car? Did you get out and head down to uh, the club? Once we got there, um, we exited, and we walked, I'd say, about 10 to 15 minutes uh, south towards uh, a restaurant.
The area right here, is that where you park right in front of the ATM? Yeah, right right in the first spot, right there. And where is the club in the later? The club will be over here. Okay. So after exiting the car, uh, you were heading, do you, did you know exactly where you were heading to? No. Um, when we parked, Joanne had yelped um, for some good restaurants to eat, and she said there was a, a high-rated uh, Mexican-themed place. So that's where we went. Okay. And how long of a walk was it from where you parked? I'd say 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. You know where we're at now, downtown, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And so it was more towards uh, the south on Orange? Yeah, um, venue 578 is a couple blocks north, so we actually crossed the courthouse, and I believe the place is a couple blocks south of here. Uh, exactly how many blocks, I'm not sure. Okay, so you went there and you had dinner? Yes. Okay, were there any uh, drinks consumed by uh, yourself uh, or uh, Mrs. Bayo, if you remember? Yeah, when we sat down, Joanne had ordered us uh, two SoCo and limes, one for herself, one for me. And what, is, what is SoCo and lime? It's like a flavored liqueur. Okay. Um, not my drink of preference, but um, we took two shots, and then we ordered food. And she ordered us to rock, and I believe Sprite. Now, when you say two shots, you each had one. Yeah, I had a shot, and she had a shot and when we sat down before we ordered food. So at that point, you had a small drink in the car and yes, sir. a shot of this drink. Yes, sir. Okay, and um, what kind of dinner did you have? Uh, we had fried chicken tenders. We had chicken and cheese quesadilla, and we also had beef tacos. Joanne and I split all three of those portions. What other stuff did you drink in terms to with the food? Oh, I, I drank water. Um, she had um, she ordered one Sprite and Ciroc. Uh, when she finished that one, she did order another one. Um, once we finished dinner, I ordered two shots of SoCo and lime, and Joanne and I took two more shots before we left. Of those two shots you ordered? Yeah. Yes, so sir. For the, you had two shots at the bar. I had I two, mean at the restaurant. two shots when we sat down. Uh, I had a shot, she had a shot, and then when we left, I ordered another round of shots, one for myself, one for her. Okay. And how long were you at the restaurant for? An hour, hour and a half at most. Okay. At, while the restaurant and eating there, did it come up as to your relationship with Joanne? Yes. Trey asked, or Trevante asked, so how do you two know each other? And what did she say? She said, he's my banker. Okay. And... At that point, what was your impression of that? I was like, okay, I guess we're playing that game. And, uh, and what did she say when, she, after she said it? She flashed me like a, and kind of looked away. Okay, Do you have, was there any issues between you and Trevante upon learning that? No, sir. Okay, you guys still had to enjoy each other at, at dinner? My purpose was to enjoy time with Joanne, that's why I was there. Okay, um, and at, previously you had had a, a sexual relations, so you felt you were going to have a good evening. Yeah, I was my the plant. My bag was at her house. Um, I was planning on staying there for at least uh, a couple days before we returned on Saturday morning. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of brushed it off. I didn't think too much of it. Okay. So after dinner, where did you go? Uh, we began to walk back towards the venue. Um, say it was about another 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes before we got back. It was a hot day. Um, when we got back to the car, there was a few people forming at the door for the line. Um, and they went back to the car. Joanne made herself one more drink um, in the car. Trevante abstained. He didn't have a drink. He didn't want one. And uh, neither did I. I just wanted to go in the event. It was really hot outside. Okay. This is June 4th. Yes. At some point, did the venue open? We went to the line, and we kind of stood in line for about five or ten minutes before the venue opened. I think it was about 7.30, 7.45 maybe when we entered. And the time frames you're giving us, those are kind of generalizations, correct? Yeah, I wasn't checking my watch, um, just kind of replaying the events. Um, yeah, it's definitely a generalization. I, I think the simple thing was when you went into the venue, was it still light out or was it getting dust? Do you remember? It, it was approaching dusk, but it was still light out. It was Okay. So you go in the venue and tell me about when you first went in there. Uh, you guys all three went in together? Yes, sir. When you first went in, where did you go? What did you do? Well, there's a bar right in front of you. Um, so I went to the bar and I, I ordered myself two drinks. Joanne was with me. Trey was with us at the time. When the drinks arrived, uh, Trey wasn't there. Um, I gave Joanne one of the Heineken lights that I had ordered. I had ordered one for her and one for myself. We cheers and we took a sip. Okay. And did you guys tell me about how you hung out? And, and take the jury through the next hour or so at the club. Tell us what was going on. Uh, once tell we us got about the music, the atmosphere, everything. 
There was house music playing. Um, I wasn't too big of a fan of currency. I'm more of a fan of old school hip hop. Um, so I wasn't really paying attention to the music, but it was playing. It was kind of hard to talk in there. We were just talking about normal things. You know, how's your brother? Um, how's your mom? I haven't seen them in a while. And she was asking me about my family as well. Um, from there, the place kind of started to fill up. Um, so we were just kind of mingling, moving around. I hadn't been there before, so I was kind of checking the place out um, just to see what it was. Okay. So at some point during the evening, did you kind of lose contact with Joanne? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of, you know, leaned on the wall and just kind of, you know, hung out, kind of absorbed and people watched as I normally do. Um, and she, I, I'm assuming, saw some people that she knew or, or something like that. So she was kind of walking around as well. Is there, is there at some point where you left the venue to search for them? Yeah, well, um, after a little bit, I hadn't seen them. I kind of, you know, looked around for her. Um, so I assumed that they had gone back out to the car to make themselves another drink. Oh, oh, oh. Tell me about Joanne's appearance. Was she easily identifiable in the club? Yeah, she was wearing all white. She was wearing all white, and she had on uh, reflective aviator sunglasses. And how was she wearing them? Uh, she was wearing them down towards, like, the nose, down at the bottom of her nose, so she can kind of see over them. Okay, is that kind of... The, with the, her, the way she was sometimes? Yeah, that's her style. Okay. So at some point, you, did, you weren't able to find them? No, sir. And what did you do? Uh, I exited, um, and I went up to the car where the car was parked. And why'd you go out there? Uh, that's why I assumed they were out there. And why would they be out there? Um, well, the, they still had their bottle of Ciroc in the car, uh, so drinks were kind of expensive at Venue 578, so I'm assuming they were taking advantage um, of the fact that they had alcohol in the car. Now, had you already finished your bottle of Hennessy, or was there still some left in the back? Seat? There was definitely still some left. Um, not really a big drinker, especially of hard liquor. So there's definitely uh, more, not, more than enough left in my bottle of Hennessy, that's for sure. If you have a bottle with Hennessy, I don't drink Hennessy. Is that more of a sipping thing with a mixer? Yeah, definitely. Okay. It's a strong drink. So when you got out there, um, when you got out there to her, tell us about uh, the interaction you had with them. Well, as I approached the vehicle, she saw me, um, and I kind of went up and, you know, tapped on the window. She came out, and I was like, you know, hey, this is this is kind of weird. This is awkward. Um, and she's like, oh, what are you talking about? And I'm like, you know, this is kind of uncomfortable. I'm like, you know, let's talk about this. And, and she kind of just blew it off, and she walked back towards the club, which I guess I, I just rolled my eyes, and I, I walked back towards the club as well. Did you go back inside the club? Yes, sir. Okay, so when you're back inside the club, take the jury over the next uh, time period, your interaction with her, what happened with your uh, involvement with her at the club. When I got back into the club, I ordered another Heineken Light for myself and kind of hung out, leaned against the wall as I was before. The crowd had filled up and the dance floor was there. Um, there was opening acts by this time, so there was people on the stage performing. Um, after a little bit, I saw Joanne dancing in the middle of the dance floor and I approached, went in. I did the butt bump, which I normally do to her, just kind of greet her on the dance floor. Um, she looked at me, and we kind of swayed a little bit side to side um, at that time. Okay, and is there a time where she grabbed your arm to take you somewhere? Yeah, she, she grabbed my arm. She told me that she was going to the bathroom. Um, so when she grabbed my arm, she kind of pulled me, and I turned, and I followed her. Okay. Um, and at, at, as you followed her, tell, me, tell us what happened there. Uh, she went into the bathroom. Um, I took a couple steps into the bathroom as well, following her. Um, she noticed I was behind her, and she kind of looked at me. She said, I'm just going to use the bathroom. And I said, okay. All right. And um, so you exited the bathroom. Where'd you go? I went to the bathroom myself. Okay. When you came back out, did you see her? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. At some point later on, did you see her again? Yeah, I saw her uh, a short time later, and I just I, I was uncomfortable at that time. Um, the events had, had kind of led up to that time when she went out to the car. Um, and especially at the car, just, you know, her desire not to talk about the situation made me uncomfortable. And I said, hey, you know, this is weird. You know, you invited me up. Uh, we're at the show, and I understand you're with a friend, but it's, it's uncomfortable right now for me, and I can tell it's uncomfortable for you. Can we go someplace quiet and just talk about this? And she didn't say anything. She just turned, and she, she headed towards the front door. Okay. And uh, was that her sign that she was leaving the club to talk? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Was she crying at that time? No, sir. Okay. Was she like just perturbed or just kind of like she seemed annoyed <laughs> perturbed yeah okay and that leads us to when you were walking out we've seen video of you walking out of the club correct sir your honor i'd like to publish that video and have them discuss it and have a moment you thank you
Yes. That's fine. Just indicate for the record which exhibit you're publishing, please. I'm publishing at this point. Stop and speak to any security guys that he was concerned what was going on. Do you 
and senior staff to speak with the police officer. Uh, no, so the intent of you guys walking was just to have a kind of conversation with what's going on. And that she thought, yes, sir. At this point, do you think she's been south? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering where she's going. Meeting with her, where did you actually come to a stop? Once I got to her, she crossed the street. I crossed the street right there. The stop right in front of the control was slow. She crossed the street. And do you recall how long you had been up there speaking? For uh, the jury's benefit, when you're up there, describe to them you know, the conversation. First of all, which way were you facing the way she faced the well, are you going to continue with the Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just play the whole thing up to the officer through the piece. Uh, and you're, this, but, you know, the, the understanding is that uh, at some point at during your conversation with the officer through the piece, correct? I don't want to get there yet, but your understanding is you're up there for a couple of minutes. Why don't you go back to uh, the Now, if you could, for the jury's benefit, just tell them about the conversation and how it was going, what was happening there. Um, I'm just, I'm asking, I'm saying, Joe, let's just talk about this. Let's get this over with so we can figure out what's going on. Um, at that time, she's like, why are you asking me these questions? Um, what do you want to know? You're acting like my boyfriend. And I said, Joe, you invited me here. This is uncomfortable for you. This has been uncomfortable for me. Let's figure this out so that we can either continue to have a good night um, or just, you know, just end it. Okay, so during that, was she animated? Tell me how, how she was acting. Uh, Joe uses her hands a lot when she speaks, so. You know. Yeah, she, I mean, she's like, why do you, you know, she's just throwing up her hands and, and things of that nature. And I'm just standing there saying, you know, calm down. Let's talk about this. Let's figure this out. At some point, did uh, did she try and move away, and did you attempt to stop her? Yeah, after a couple minutes um, of me trying to talk to her and have a conversation, she stepped towards back towards the club, and I put my right arm out and grasped her right elbow. She stopped, turned back, and faced me, and we continued to talk again for another 10 to 15 seconds. When you grasp her elbow, is that the context of what everybody's talking about, the grab was? Yes. That's it. Direction to the witness testify what other people saw. Okay. For the jury's benefit, how long was that grab for? A split second. Okay. After you grabbed her and let go, did she stay there and talk to you? Yeah, she turned back and we continued to talk to each other. I tried to continue to talk to her. She was still kind of the, the same demeanor. At any time did, after that initial touched her, did you try and limit her from leaving that area? No, sir. Did you touch her in any other way after that? No, sir. Did you grab her by the shoulders and shake her? for? No, time? sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you grab her in any way other than that just to kind of... Tell her that you wanted to continue the discussion. No, sir. I didn't put my hands on her after I grasped her elbow when she turned to, to walk back towards the venue. And after that happened, did you guys continue to talk for a little bit? Yeah, I'd say about 10 to 15 seconds. And then what happened? Officer Cruz approached us. Okay. Um, if I could have the witness step down, I just want to kind of get an idea for the jury. Sure. I want you to picture that this is orange. And that's Concord, this is the trophy shop. How are you standing? I'm standing with my back to the trophy shop. And am I Joanne? Um, oh, no. <laughs> you stand with your back to the Okay, this is, this is the way you guys are having your discussion. Yes, sir. Okay, and at some point, she starts, she's like, throws you, did she throw it in? said, I'm, I'm, I'm done, or something like that. She's like, Mario, you always talking? Question. And then she starts going, let's just talk. Let's talk about this. Okay, and that was the extent of this. That was it. And then you continue to talk. And now I'm Officer Cruz. Where did he come from? He approached us um, from crosswalk on the record across from Benny Plaza. When did you first notice him? Uh, about 10 minutes and seconds after that stopped. Okay, but then where was he when you first saw him? Uh, uh, I, was, I would say, yeah, he was about two steps off the sidewalk and approaching Okay, when he got there, what did he say? He said, hey, what's going on? What did you say? He said, we're just talking. And what did he say? He said, you know, you guys need to come with me. What did you say? He said, sir, we're just talking. Did Joanne say anything? 
Did you follow Officer Cruz and Joanne over and you went back towards uh, the venue? Yes, sir, I did. All right, and you went uh, to an area on the Con Concord side that's been discussed in this case? Yes, yeah. And take the jury at, to the point where you have got to that big sidewalk in front of the venue. Mm -hmm. Tell the jury where Joanne was, where you and Officer Cruz was, and what, how the whole situation went when he split you up. Well, as we approached, Joanne was about two steps ahead of Officer Cruz. He was about a half a step ahead of me to my left. Uh, so she arrived at the sidewalk before us. Um, once we got to the sidewalk, we all stopped, I guess, a couple feet from the street. Um, Officer Cruz said, stay right here. I'm going to talk to her. And he took her about five to ten feet away. Did you, did you, after you started taking her away, did you take any more steps towards her? We had to tell you to stop again? No, sir. How uh, far? Um, you're standing at the corner where you are right now. Yes, sir. How far away is Joanne and Officer Cruz from where I'm standing right now? I'd say about the same distance. And where I'm standing, mm -hmm. is I, Joanne, the position looking at you? Is this the way it was? Yes, we were still making eye contact as Officer Cruz engaged there in conversation. Was so Officer Cruz right in front of her? Uh, he was in front of her, but standing um, to a little bit to my right, her left. Um, at that point, that Officer Mays come on the scene at all before when he first started talking to her? No, sir. Uh, as he started talking to her, what did you see happen to Joanne? Uh, about 10 to 15 seconds after he was started talking to her, she started crying. What were your thoughts when you saw her crying? I was wondering why she was crying. Okay. And, you know, did he continue to talk to her? Yes, sir. Did she continue to cry more or get more upset? Yeah, she, she, she started sobbing. Um, I wouldn't call it uncontrollably, but she definitely started, started sobbing more than she did initially. How did you feel when you saw her? <laughs> I wanted to comfort her. Uh, I mean, we were having a disagreement, but I don't like to see her cry. So I just wanted to figure out what was going on. At some point, did Officer Mays come on the scene? Yes, sir. Was Officer Cruz still saw talking to Mrs. Fay when Officer Mays came? Yes, sir. And you would maintain your position the whole time that Officer Cruz was talking to Mrs. Fay? When I saw her start to cry, I did take a step forward, and Officer Cruz told me, he turned around, and he said, step back, which I did. Yeah, I, I wanted to see if I could hear what he was saying and, and why she was crying. Now, when Officer Mays came to the scene, okay, you're, say where you are, I'm where Joanne is, I'm Officer Mays. He walks on Concord, comes up. About how far is he away from you when he stops? Um, I'd say maybe, maybe a, a six inches to a foot away from where you are now. Okay, when he came, did he ever try and, uh, and, and engage you in a conversation? No, when he approached, he didn't look at me. Where was he looking? He was just kind of staring off into space, I guess. He wasn't, he didn't acknowledge me at all when he came up. So there's never, nobody ever even came up and asked your name, where you're from, and how this whole thing went about. No, sir. At some point, did Officer uh, Cruz stop talking with Ms. Uh, Espeo and then meet with Officer Mays? Yes, sir. Okay, wh where did Officer Mays walk to meet with him? Um, I'd say about three or four steps that way. Did they confer and start talking about here? Yes, sir. Sometimes they stop talking and start coming towards you. Yes, sir. As they came towards you, tell me what initially Officer Cruz said to you. Well, as Officer Cruz pivoted and faced me, uh, I said to him, Sir, what would you say to her? Why is she crying? At that point, are you raising your voice to him at all? No, sir. Okay. Uh, and what did he say back to you? He said, That's none of your concern. She's found a ride home. You can leave. Okay. And upon hearing that, what did you say? Well, I just need to talk to her real quick. Okay. And did you maintain your position there? Yes, sir. Um, and what did he say back to you? He said, that's not a good idea. It's time for you to leave. Okay. At that point, did you feel that you could leave? No, sir. I knew I couldn't. Okay. Why? What did you need to find out? Oh, well, my next statement to Officer Cruz was, I need to talk to her so I can get my key. Explain to the jury why you said this and what was your reasoning at that 
I'm not from Orlando. Um, I don't have any family or friends up here other than Joanne. I had just met Trey, and as I said before, I went to her house, parked my car, my overnight bag with my clothes, and my car keys were in her house. Her house was locked. Well, you do have a friend called uh, Ms. Uh, Murphy who lives in Kissimmee, right? He does, yes. Okay, were you thinking of that at that point? Not at that moment, no. Okay, you were thinking that everything's over there? My keys, my bag, my car, everything that I needed to get home um, was there. Did you have a way from there in your mind to get back there at all? No, sir. Who drove you to the venue? Trevante. After saying that you wanted to, what you said about keys and cars, what did Officer Cruz say to you after? He repeated again, you should go. I said, but I need to talk to her. I need my key. At any time, did you ever talk in that, that area, Officer Mays or Officer Cruz? No, sir, I did not. Did you ever try to get through them to Mrs. Fayette? No, sir, I did not. Did you ever say, I'm going to get to her and you're not going to stop? No, sir, I did not. At that point, is that when the video started at the club, the first video by Mr. Taylor? I believe so. You're on the right. Yes, you can. Oh, wow. 
compound on a single metallic object and a split second just lets go of my hand. Uh, what does he do after he lets what does he do to you after you put arrow? Uh, at that point, when he's walking in front of you, uh, did he say you were under arrest? No, sir. Officer Cruz with his head turned away. Did you ever hear Officer May yell spread? As soon as I'm finished with this section uh, of the, we're done now, so he, but I'm going to have, uh, there's another video that comes right up yeah. there's a time, so I'll, I'll move it to the side, talk to him, then bring him back down if I can, Your Honor. That's fine. Your Honor, and just for the record, um, I think counsel's
that I even had a comment about that is because frequently lawyers will refer and show jurors photographs when they're not in evidence and then the jury during their deliberations will send out a note and say we'd like to see that photograph and then it's not in evidence so they can't see it so I realize it's just a little technicality but we need to make sure that whatever the jury considers is actually in evidence Carter, be excused from the table just to sit at council table. Yes, that's fine. We instruct Mr. Carter that we're really not allowed to talk to him. Uh, he can't talk to anybody else about his testimony, but he can always confer with his right. attorneys. because we just received discovery from the state and the state listed um, attorney uh, Lawler's website. So I didn't know what that was about. Do that now with Mr. Carter sitting here so we could approach. That's fine. 